Instead of painting my first mountain bike frame, I cold blued it. I really like the look, and it's probably the quickest and easiest way to put color on a steel frame. The plan for the new mountain bike is to do a combination of paint and cold bluing. But when I looked for info on putting paint on top of bluing, I couldn't find much. And what I did find online wasn't very useful. Some people said it was fine, others said it wouldn't work. So I figured the only way to really find out is to do a test. For the test, I found an old practice seat tube and cleaned it down to bare metal. Normally I wouldn't use a Cubitron belt to clean a tube, but since this is scrap, I don't care if I take off a little bit of extra metal. After the tube gets a good shine, I clean it with isopropyl and wipe it down with a clean rag. I realized I didn't have any foam brushes, so I did the first coat with a rag, which is definitely not the best way to apply bluing solution. Bluing is a chemical process commonly used on guns and machine parts and actually chemically changes the surface of the metal instead of just covering it with another substance like paint. It gives the metal a thin, dark finish. After a quick wipe down with a Scotch-Brite pad and a clean rag, it was ready for another coat. This time I made sure I had some foam brushes. The foam brush holds a lot of solution and lets me really soak the tube so I get a nice, even finish. Cold blue solution is kind of nasty stuff, so I'm using gloves, eye protection, and a respirator. I also had a drop cloth below the tube to catch any drips. Cold bluing is a pretty easy way to finish a frame. No priming needed, you don't have to worry about it being too thick, and you only need two or three quick coats. There are different types of bluing, with cold bluing being the easiest, but also the least rust resistant. The other types of bluing that provide more protection aren't really accessible for a home hobbyist frame builder, because you need to soak the frame in hot, acidic reagents. After I let the solution soak in and it starts to dry out, I wipe the tube with a wet paper towel to remove any excess bluing solution. Now that the tube is blued, it's time for primer and paint. I didn't have any spray.bike primer, so I just used some Rust-Oleum brand primer from the hardware store. I've used this clean metal primer in the past with good results. The paint I'm using is Spray Dot Bike Milan Blue. Obviously the primer goes on first, followed by the paint, which I didn't really need to do since I'm actually just testing how well the primer sticks to the cold blued steel, but it was nice to see the color scheme in real life. After the paint had cured, the first thing I tried was just rubbing my thumb on the primer and paint. I figured if the primer wasn't adhering to the cold blue, I'd be able to smear it off. Next I slid some rubber tubing over a metal tube and tried rubbing the paint off again. This caused some damage to the paint, but the primer held up well. Having used Spray Dot Bike on other frame projects, this didn't surprise me. Eventually it did remove primer from the fade section, but it took a while. Where the primer was full thickness, it withstood the friction from the rubber hose pretty well. Lastly, I scratched the primer and paint with some old scissors. Again, it did as well as expected. I've DIY painted several frames with rattle cans, and it isn't terribly durable or scratch resistant. Cold bluing's biggest drawback is that it needs a bit of maintenance to keep it rust free. It offers some rust protection, but not enough for a bike that gets ridden. To get some additional rust protection, I oil the frame. When I was looking for products to put on bare metal for rust protection, I came across some hot rodder forums. Custom hot rod builders will occasionally leave their steel car bodies bare, and one popular product to use is Gibbs Lubricant. 
It comes in a spray can and I just spray some on a rag, wipe a thin layer on the tubes, leave it there for a few hours, then wipe off any excess. I did that same process on the painted section of the tube to see if Gibbs affected the paint or primer, which it didn't. When Gibbs dries, it isn't greasy or sticky and leaves a nice satin sheen on the metal, but it needs to be reapplied every so often. How often depends on how much moisture it sees. My main trail bike doesn't get used in wet conditions much, so cold blowing works out well in this situation. Depending on how a bike is going to get used, cold blowing may or may not be a good choice. I'd probably never cold blue a fat bike because it would be way too much work to maintain. Unless I was looking for a rusted patina look, then cold blowing would definitely be an option. So the final verdict is, spray primer will stick to cold blued steel, at least when using these same products. Rattle can paint jobs are probably the least durable finish out there, but if you're like me and you're impatient, you like DIY projects and don't mind some scratches, it's a good option. Cold bluing is a quick and easy option, but does require some effort to maintain it. I'm guessing neither of these options will appeal to the majority of bike owners, but I like the look, I like the quick turnaround time, and I don't really mind the disadvantages. In the next video, I'll be back working on the actual frame. I'll put frame saver in the tubes, get it all prepped, and then cold blue and paint it. If you want to see how the frame turns out, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button so you'll see the next video when it's published. If you're enjoying this video series, consider a super thanks. And if you haven't watched the other videos in the series, go check them out. Thanks for watching. Take care. See you next time.